Hey everyone, welcome back to vMix Bootcamp. I'm really excited to have you back here in our new Green Bay studio, at least new to you. It's been a little while and I'm excited to get back into this series because it's a lot of fun and I hope that you've been enjoying it too. So far, we've done a lot of video centric setup. Today, I'm going to show you how we're gonna route all of our audio, get into some Dante and get into a little bit of basic mixing. If you don't have all the exact equipment, that's okay follow along and apply it to the equipment that you have at home or in your studio. All right, let's get into it. So I'm going to start by actually going to uh, Amber here. This is where all of our Zoom audio is coming in and out of. So if I want to create a send over to the board so that uh, the board is mixing the Zoom audio, I'm going to start up here in my settings and I'm going to go to audio outputs. On each one of these buses, I can attach a device. I could also just select enabled if I want to keep it uh, inside vMix and just use it virtually. But for this, I actually already have it set up here properly. I'm going to use bus A, which is attached to Dante Virtual Sound Card 1. So it's always good to confirm that. I'm going to click OK there. And then I'm also going to add a return so that I can send the Zoom callers an IFB. So I'm going to add an input. I'm going to go to audio input. And for my audio device, I wanna select virtual sound card RX1. And let's actually back up real quick because I did that um, without showing you the thing that has to be running in the background, which is Dante Virtual Sound Card. The IP address is something that I wanna call out real quick because we actually have a separate Dante network from our regular internet network. And I really recommend doing this if you aren't already doing it. Dante is an audio over IP codec that prefers certain uh, quality of service requirements on your switch. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay because there's a lot of great documentation about it online. All right, let's move move on. I'm going to close Dante Virtual Sound Card. It'll keep running in the background. So now I want to uh, not uh, have to start my Zoom session yet. I'm going to just create a placeholder audio track here. That way, when we are over in the mixer, we can make sure that our line is working. So oftentimes I just go to a web browser and just add a random YouTube video. And it's always a fun exercise to see what I used last. All right, looks like there's an ad here right now. Oh no, all right, here we go. Some chill hop, perfect. Music, music will work well for this. Okay, over here, I am uh, going to switch this out of uh, auto mixing. I'm gonna turn, it, turn the uh, channel on and I'm going to go to bus A for this. Now this is a stereo mix here and bus A looks like stereo, but again, if I go over to my audio outputs, you'll see this is just Dante Virtual Sound Card 1. If I did 1 plus 2, it would be stereo, but I'm not going to because it's just a mono source once we go to Zoom. So for the time being, this is going to take just the left channel, but you know that won't matter too much once we get into our mixer. Okay, so this is set up correctly on this production bot. Now I'm going to disconnect here and I'm going to go to my um, audio control PC here. Cool, and here I have uh, the SQ Mixpad app. This is what our uh, SQ6 is connected to right now. And the, uh, you know, we have like an actual board over there that you might want to move faders on, but for this video, it's much easier to just show you this. So over on my processing here, let's, um, let's start using these. I'm gonna start with Talent 2 here. Um, I'm going to double click here and, or click here, and I'm gonna call this Zoom and I'm just gonna color this yellow to call out that I've changed it. And so I want to route the uh, zoom right here. So I'm going to go to a Dante controller here and just refresh this to make sure it's all the way up to date. And let's start with our transmitters. So I was on Amber, that was the machine I was on, and you can see these are the eight channels that I have. They're pre-labeled uh, because oftentimes we have uh, set uses for each one of these. And I'm going to go to my Remy 2 SQ6 here. And let's, let's patch uh, A1, Talent 1, because I did the A bus, which was on 1. And I'm going to patch that into Talent 2 here. I'm gonna click there. And you can see, just like that, that started lighting up with the music. If I unpatch, it's gonna go away. If I repatch, 
there it is. So that's great. I have my Dante running into here. So I now want to, on talent one, I'm gonna bring in Aaron over here. So I'm gonna type Aaron over here, click okay. I did, Aaron, I did not try to spell your name with an I, it was a typo. And I'm going to go over to IO patch here. So on my IO port section here, you can see that currently I have Aaron's channel patched to a Dante line, but actually I wanna do this as a local XLR line because he has a microphone in the studio. So I'm going to patch that there. He's not in the studio right now, but I'll just trust that that is uh, patched. So when the microphone gets plugged in here, it's going to show up in my mixer. And that is cool because I can mix my Dante patches with my XLR patches. You have a lot of other options. I'm gonna turn this up here so I have something going to my left to right bus. And I'm going to now go to Coral, which is my main switching machine. So when we have audio being dealt with a separate mixer, we then need to bring it into our main switch so that that switcher can embed the audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an input. I'm going to go to audio input again, and I'm going to add Dante Virtual Sound Card 1 plus 2. I'll add a stereo input. I'm going to click OK here. And nothing's here yet, because I haven't uh, patched Dante. So I'm gonna do master uh, mix, main mix, master mix, whatever you wanna call it. And I have this ready to go, it's here, and this is set up correctly. I don't want audio switching on, I want it to always be on the master bus. That way when we send our stream, it's going to always receive the master output from our mixer. So let's click over here to Dante controller. And I'm going to take my SQ6 here, and then the destination is Coral, which is the machine I'm on now. And here are inputs one and two. Um, you'll see that the, the names don't quite match there, but that's okay. One and two is still the one I switched. All right, I, I one and two is still the one I chose. And I'm gonna do program left here. You can see it lit up left. I'm gonna do program right here. You can see it lit up right. Awesome, so I now have most of this uh, patched and ready to go, but I do have one more thing. I have my graphics that I want to send as well. So that is running on barrel here. So I have this uh, intro uh, title card loop. I'm gonna play this here. Here's the audio track. And you can see here, and I wanted to show you this, that all I have right here is M and A, master bus and A bus. And the reason why is because I have none here, this is enabled, and then I have Dante Virtual Sound Card as my C bus, but that's hidden. If I right click on the buses here, I get to my other buses. So you have uh, eight buses to work with, eight stereo buses to work with, that's 16 channels of audio inside vMix, which is a pretty awesome feature once you really put Dante to its uh, full extent. So I'm going to switch this from enabled which would just be used inside vMix, to Dante Virtual Sound Card 1 plus 2. And then on this, rather than Dante Virtual Sound Card, I, I don't want that to conflict. So I'm going to switch this just to Windows Default Playback Device, which is gonna play it over the digital output, which in this case, nothing's plugged into, so that's okay. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to ask me to restart vMix, and that's totally okay. It's going to reboot right into where it was before. Excellent. So now I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to put this on a bus. And I'm going to do that for all of these because none of these have anything to do with master bus. You might be wondering, uh, why don't you just select a bus as Dante Virtual Sound Card? That's a, that's a great question. I oftentimes uh, let my master bus on a graphics car, on a graphics machine uh, be like my listen. So uh, it's just personal preference. You can switch it to master bus if you prefer to do that. And now I have this routed. Let's, um, let's now go back to my audio machine here. I could just do a uh, Dante controller on uh, the, the graphics machine I was on, but just for consistency. So I'm gonna scroll over here and you'll see on this mixer, I already have pre-configured configured a graphics uh, input here. If I go to my setup here, and I go to mixer config, you'll see that channels 13 and 14 are set to a stereo pair right now. 
So as I go back to processing, that's what this is here. This is a uh, 13 and 14. So this is actually a stereo input. And I can come to my IO patch, my inputs, and just double check that I have it going. And here it is, 13, 14, or left, right, patch to graphics one. So that's a great way to confirm. And now I'm going to go back to Dante controller, and click back to my processing here to configure this. I'm going to go to Barrel, which is my graphics machine. And I was sending out of buses one and two, or rather channels one and two, bus A. All right, I'm going to go to my Remy 2 SQ6, and scroll down to my graphics channel here, 13 and 14, and go in, go in. There we go. Now we have our graphics routed. So I would definitely want to configure this a little bit differently. <laughs> I, would, I would want to uh, get rid of all these uh, channels if I were running it on this mixer, but I, I'm not. I would always prefer to run this uh, in front of the desk on the faders. Okay, so now I'm gonna disconnect here and go back to Coral. And that is still coming in here very nicely. So I would always go and I would check my audio outputs at this point and just make sure that this isn't going somewhere you don't want it to. In this case, my Windows default playback device is what I'd be monitoring on if I were the technical director. And then no matter what uh, it is there, your streams here are going to take from uh, your master bus. I'm going to come here. I'm gonna just make sure that that's selected on master so that I make sure that our, uh, output one, which is going to my stream, is pulling from exactly where I'm expecting it to. And I'm going to click on okay. So now I have all of my sources routed to my mixer and I have my mixer sending it to the switching machine to embed the output, but there is another element that I want the mixer to do, and that is to build a simple mix minus to go back to Aaron and back to our talent. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm going to go back into the audio PC here. And over here, I have these aux sends. I have 12 of them. Aux one, I have set up as a mix minus for Aaron. So I'm going to make sure that Aaron hears this aux. You can see Aaron's all the way down, so he won't hear himself on a loop back. I have zoom going there. I'm also gonna scroll over here to graphics. You can see, oftentimes I'll put graphics in, but I'll put it down a little bit uh, quieter so that he can hear it, but he can still focus on other things. And then on aux two, I'm gonna make sure a similar setting is here for our zoom audience. You can see that this aux is called talent two mix minus appropriately. Scroll over here, and now you can see Aaron's channel is up. They'll be able to hear him, but they won't be able to hear themselves. So. This is patched correctly here. I'm going to click over into my IO patch on this mixer and go over to Dante. And so on these mix outputs, just confirm that mix output one, which is called talent one mix minus, is going to go out of Dante, uh, Dante one. And also for Dante two, make sure that talent two mix minus is going there. So great, they're going to get the proper mix minus. I'm going to open up Dante controller here. And I'm going to send the output of this SQ6 over to Coral, no, Amber, which is going to get the Zoom mix minus. So it's going to get Talent 2 mix minus. And then that is there, awesome. I'm gonna make sure that the local output, which is going to uh, get sent to Aaron over uh, XLR into his earpiece, uh, is also patched here so that he will hear it because he doesn't need Dante, he just needs uh, copper cable, basically. Awesome, so now to test this, I am going to make sure that I have something running to my IFB, and I do because this graphics is going. Let's disconnect from here and go to my Zoom machine, which is Amber, and there we go. Dante RX1 is getting a return. And just to make sure that it's not a loop back or anything, I'm gonna mute this source and the audio is still going here. So I know it's not a loop back that they're getting. They're just getting their return. Right here, I want to send this to bus B because bus B is what the Zoom callers will hear. I'm going to go to uh, my audio outputs here to confirm that. There we go. So that is correct, so they will hear that on Zoom. And one last trick before we wrap up here, a uh, bit of a side note, I built this hold color here. This is a really good thing to do so that 
Uh, here, I can do a mix input, and this is going to output one. And this way, before anyone joins the Zoom call, the TD will just see the hold color so that they're not seeing a loop back, which is what we experienced in our last video. So as I come over here, I can see now that I have that here rather than a loop back of the program. So that is a very useful trick. So that is an in-depth look on how we set up audio and a little bit about why we do it that way. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below and I will actually be the one answering them. Thanks for watching and see you next time.